These stories just keep piling up. You've had years to think of how to respond to this. Mm. And this is the best you could do. And then he goes on to say this. Oh, this is what really rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. This really, like, I, I oh, God. You he can't just, hide he just behind keeps opinion. saying shit. Reject Nation, what we've got here is failure to communicate. Guys, look, so you've probably already heard about this by now if you have a Twitter account and we're coming to you a little bit late. And more often than not, I would I would confidently say that whenever we talk about any story that if you like, you see the title or thumb, you're like, oh, it's a dramatic hate video. And then I think if you watch our videos more often than not, I would say that we, we actually try to explore a bit of a gray area and really discuss it and talk about it or have fun with it for the most part. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've kind of been a, a obsessively thinking about this story for the past few hours. And it it uh, it kind of pisses me off uh, quite a bit actually. It, it actually like I was I was working out at the gym, pumping out the anger. Just to be upfront with you guys, it's not another video about you know restore the Snyderverse. Although hashtag restore, restore the, the Snyderverse. Snyderverse. I don't get why it's so hard. You got a multiverse going on. You could just put it in a pocket dimension. It's not that complicated. And this is also not about the future of the DCEU. I mean, there's things within the DCU that I freaking love and I'm very much excited for. I'm loving Peacemaker. The Suicide Squad was one of my favorite movies last year. The Batman, I'm very much looking forward to as well. This is not even about that. What I want to talk about specifically and solely things Joss Whedon said in an interview with Vulture, specifically regarding Ray Fisher and Gal Gadot. So while it's pertaining to the Justice League, it's really it's really about Joss Whedon and just how much of a dick this guy is, man. And just how oblivious he is to a lot of his own behaviors. The guy's a, a freaking narcissist. This is a classic case of, yeah, I did some things wrong, but most, no, uh, that was, that's a lie. That was taken out of proportion. And also, uh, no, they just misunderstood. <laughs> they just know? misunderstood. And compared it, to a lot of other people, I'm great. <laughs> and after the years of things of like Ray Fisher, of what he's pretty much sacrificed his whole career about, a lot of these people who've come out and told stories about Joss Whedon, some very abhorrent stories about sexual misconduct, just verbal abuse, emotional abuse. A lot of these people are like writers, producers, actors. This isn't just some person from the street, you know, who is yeah, some yeah, random yeah. fan or whatever. Some random fan he hooked up with or something, yeah. So, there's two things here. First off, uh, like, the Gal Gadot one really, really upset me a lot. And I got a lot of reasons as to why, but I'll, I'll go into the, the the Ray Fisher one really quick here. As you guys have heard by now, the countless things, you know, Ray Fisher has talked about of Whedon's behavior on set. Here's how the article puts it. Whedon downsized Cyborg's role, cutting scenes that in Fisher's view challenged stereotypes. Whedon says he was stunned because there was this whole debacle about how they were lightening up Ray Fisher's skin tone color to not make him be as black as he mm -hmm. is, right? And what Whedon said is he had given the whole movie a lighter look, brightening everything in post-production, including all the faces. He said that the claim he had disliked the character's skin tone, which Forbes ultimately attracted, was false and unjust. That right there, I can go, all right, yeah, sure. maybe. The whole movie is oversaturated, so... Yeah. Yeah. Sure, all right, I'll give that to him. But then here's where he goes. This is where I'm just like, what an asshole. Whedon says he cut down Cyborg's role for two reasons. The storyline logically made no sense, and he felt the acting was bad. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? None of the claims Fisher made in the media were either true or merited disgusting, Whedon told me. He could think of only one way to explain Fisher's motives. We're talking about a malevolent force. We're talking about a bad actor in both senses. First of all, you guys saw... I'm sorry, Assuming if you're watching this video, you've seen at least Zack Snyder's Justice League. That storyline was per made perfect sense. I remember clearly that one of the things I was so happy about with that movie when it came out was that one of the most praised qualities, one of the most surprising praised qualities for a lot of critics and audiences was specifically the Ray Fisher cyborg storyline, how that was the heart of the story, and that Ray Fisher's acting was incredible. So to just be a douche and just say <laughs> his acting was bad it was like no 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 you just don't know how to direct you just don't get <laughs> it <laughs> like you're not you're not getting it you don't know how to work with the material and what you're doing is you're placing blame and not knowing how to work with actors the job of a director is to communicate that's your main job is communicating you are the conductor of an orchestra you're not doing everything you're conducting you're communicating a vision and then every time he comes out with something it's like nuts there they just don't they don't get the brilliant <laughs> Joss Whedon he's a 
bad actor. He did this doesn't make any sense. I'm like, just because it didn't make sense to you, it's just to say your acting is bad. Like, this is the best you could come up with after all these years of Ray Fisher, like talking about countless specifics about your behavior. This is the best you could come up with. Yeah, it's a bit simplified. And I mean, the, the one that gets me even more is just the whole logically made no sense thing, because like, at least unless it was very, very different from what we saw in the Snyder Cut, which I highly doubt, like, yeah, that, that story doesn't seem to have any more logical errors or misnomers than any other story in the movie, and that's what seems the most suspect to me, is logically made no sense, like, how? And then the Gal Gadot one is one that I, a lot of people throw this word around, and I don't really, you don't, I don't really say this about people unless I'm like, there's something pretty concrete about this. And the more I think about what he said here, the more I go, that's kind of racist, man. This is kind of racist, what you said. It is very <laughs> condescending to Gal Gadot in this interview, yeah. Gadot didn't care for Whedon style either. Last year, she told reporters Whedon threatened her and said he would make her career miserable. Whedon told me he did no such thing. I don't threaten people. Who does that? What do you mean, who does Lots that? Of Lots of people, people in do. Hollywood. We're like, what a weird Lots way to- Lots of people everywhere. Who, who does that? What people do you make mean? threats Plenty. every day. <laughs> Just to try to act like that's not something that doesn't happen is so ignorant. Who does that? Lots of people. And then he goes on to say this. Oh, this is what really rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. This really like, I, I oh god. You he can't just, hide he just keeps opinion saying opinion shit for this. English is not her first language, and I tend to be annoyingly flowery in my speech. Way to own up, buddy. Well done. <laughs> he recalled arguing over a scene she wanted cut. He told her jokingly that if she wanted to get rid of it, she would have to tie him to a railroad track and do it over his dead body. Then I was told that I had something about her dead body and tying her to the railroad track. Yeah, it's not everything that was actually said. You're, you're, you're focusing on one thing that was said. Godot did not agree with Whedon's version of events. I understood perfectly. This, to me, does read a little bit racist, honestly. Gal Gadot, two Fast and Furious movies, Batman v Superman, Zack Snyder's Justice League, carried Wonder Woman, and I'm pretty sure there wasn't one moment in that film where I was like, what's this foreign bitch saying? I don't know what the hell she's talking about well, this yeah. one. Does she know what she's saying? I, can she speak a little? Like, she speaks perfectly great English. Like, Zack Snyder, Justin Lin, Patty Jenkins, what's one story you can think of where they came out and said, it's hard directing her because her first language is English. I couldn't communicate like, to her. It's a real problem with actors not language. from America, man. It's really hard. Well, and I mean, you've heard Joss Whedon's dialogue. We've heard him talk in interviews. He can't be so flowery. Like, if he's flowery enough to make it so that she just doesn't understand him, then I would have to imagine that that would happen with a lot of other people on the set, on the crew, on the cast, etc. It sounds like somebody who is pretty fluent, so yeah. I doubt that any, any misunderstanding would have been so significant as to have an entire outcome effect on the whole movie, you know? The, the ignorance of the leadership position that he took over here is what boggles my mind. Let's just think about it for one second. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and go, all right, he's a little flowery in his speech. <laughs> but her English isn't her first language. Let's say he had like a, a coming from a good place. Wouldn't you think, wouldn't the logical conclusion be I need to communicate better because English isn't her first language. So I need to be clearer and safer and maybe get some like help to make sure that I'm communicating. What did you think that would be the most obvious thing to resort to? I don't believe this for one second, but if that was the case, that's usually what a director has to do. These stories just keep piling up. You've had years to think of how to respond to this, mm. and this is the best you could do. This is awful. This is terrible. He's such an asshole. I'm at a point where I'm like, I've heard stories for years, I've talked about it for years, and I'm at a point where I'm like, this guy's just a dick. <laughs> Plain and simple, <laughs> he's a dick. There's a bit in this article too that Ray Fisher touches upon where he basically said, you know, with Zack Snyder, I had this uh, working dynamic where I would be able to give him feedback and I was kind of co-writing my character because he wanted to make sure that the portrayal of both just Victor Stone as well as him as a black man was, you know, on point. And, you know, so trying to continue that with Joss Whedon, you know, he was seemingly met, according to his account, with pretty solid aversion version to that with Joss basically saying like, hey, I don't take notes from anybody. You sound like you're take, giving me notes right now. And that just speaks to somebody who, yeah, is very confident in their own version of everything above everyone else's. And yeah, as a director, you have to have some of that. But I feel like especially hearing him talk about Gal Gadot here, hearing him talk about Ray Fisher really does seem as though somewhere along the line, he perhaps drunk his own Kool-Aid and yeah, has kind of become lost in his own power. And it seems like he's very unaware of his own behavior 
in a lot of power position scenarios, you know? I believe the mistreatment that a lot of these people have. I can't say I believe everyone simply because obviously there's, you know, it's, it's a lot of people want like concrete evidence for things that are intentionally done behind closed door in secrecy. That way you can't be outed. <laughs> like that's yeah. what people do yeah. when they're doing messed up things. It's gotten to the point where there's just so many stories and you hear the way he speaks on these things. I've chosen a, a path to believe at this point and, yeah. I, and I believe them. And especially if you're stepping in for somebody who's already got a huge working dynamic with these people, I think it's on you to bridge that gap and to work with the dynamic that you're entering that's already been a established, which it doesn't seem like he was willing to do at all. Nope. Guys, what do you think about Mr. Joss Whedon? Leave your thoughts down below. So you guys can subscribe, click that bell. Yeah, hashtag Snyderverse. <laughs>